I knew there was something weird about this place. The old man is probably a sex fiend. Welcome to In Defense Of, making the case for overlooked, forgotten or derided movies in five minutes or less. Don't have five minutes? Here's five seconds. Today, In Defense Of, Dolls, a 1987 horror that's a fairy tale for adults. Not like that one. It's like one long night. Exactly, my dear. The longest night in the world. Stranded in the countryside, young Judy, her father and wicked stepmother take refuge in a house owned by the kindly Hardwick couple who invite them to stay the night. Joined by fellow strandees Ralph, Isabel and Enid, Judy quickly finds that the hundreds of toys throughout the house are alive, and they may not take kindly to those less innocent than her. Reanimator is often discussed as one of the best horror movies of the 1980s, and rightfully so. A B-movie that was received far better than anyone could have expected, it's often paired up with From Beyond. Both are made by the same people, with mostly the same cast, they're both HP Lovecraft adaptations, and they both have a very strong sense of colour. They naturally fit as a duo. What's often left out of discussion is a third film in an unofficial trilogy. Dolls. In fact, this was made before From Beyond and filmed on the same set. While it shares the same crew and a couple of stars, it's a far different beast from either of the Lovecraft movies. What it has in common, however, is that it's really good. I was terrified of Dolls as a child, and this is one of those movies that used to leer at me from the video shelf alongside Puppet Master and Dolly Dearest, and I'd imagine all the horrible things that could be happening in the film. As a youngster, my friend Kevin managed to watch Dolls and told me about a horrific scene where the dolls cut off a woman's leg and throw her out of a window. That rolled around in my my head for years afterwards. These are the traumas that a kid remembers forever, like when I was being babysat at a friend's house and I had to sleep in the doll room. While those memories stuck with me my entire life, I didn't actually watch dolls until a few years ago and guess what? It's not half as horrific as I'd imagined it. Of course it's not, how could it be? What did surprise me though is the film's tone. Like Reanimator and From Beyond, there are huge streaks of comedy throughout dolls. But while those movies are gloopy, gory, gross-out effect showcases, Dolls plays out as half-haunted house movie, half fairy tale. The house itself is perfect, an isolated refuge from the elements just like a classic horror. Inside is a maze of corridors with rooms packed with bric-a-brac and stuff. It's convincingly the dusty old house of a kindly elderly couple, and as a result, it's inherently unsettling. We've got all the stock fairy tale and fable characters for an effective lesson in morality. An innocent put-upon little girl, her evil stepmother and disinterested father, the elderly couple and childlike man who still believe in magic, a pair of thieves who get their comeuppance. Do you recognise that particular thief? You do. Think Norwegian pop, think pencil drawings, think Morton Harkett. Carolyn Purdy Gordon is especially great as the evil stepmother. She is basically Cruella de Vil, excessively mean and without a likeable bone in her body. She's the wife of director Stuart Gordon and she's in just about everything is made, usually dying in some horrific way. Speaking of death, there's only a few on-screen kills in Dolls, but they're all memorable. There's no need for a massive body count when you get really creative with the few that you have. What of the dolls themselves? They are all sorts of creepy, even before they've done anything. When they have their big reveal, they're a mix of stop-motion animation and puppetry. Even if you don't find this frightening, you have to appreciate the charm of the effects. For me, CGI may be more convincing at times, but it doesn't come close to the enjoyment I get from the old-school techniques. I think Dolls is a pretty famous film, at least compared to some of the others I reviewed, and I am slightly puzzled as to why it's not more popular. I suspect maybe it's a little bit too low budget and B-movie-ish to have attained mainstream appreciation. Chucky is a fully animatronic creation with a personality, something stop motion and marionettes can't really compete with, especially when the first Child's Play came out just one year after Dolls. I've only got one big problem with the film, and it's that scene that Kevin described to me all those years ago. How does this make any sense? Can anyone explain what happened there? She just jumps out the window for no reason. I figured maybe the filmmakers had other plans, maybe the dolls were going to throw out the window but it proved too hard to film. The director's commentary says no, this was the plan all along. Odd. Oh, now see if you can spot the puppeteer here. Look carefully, they're incredibly well hidden. <laughs> dolls definitely slots alongside Reanimator and From Beyond, even if it's the black sheep of the group that doesn't quite fit. If you're a Chucky fan and you can't get enough of killer doll fun, give this a go. Teddy. 
Replacing the gruesome horror of Reanimator and From Beyond with a haunted house fantasy fable, Dolls deserves as much recognition as the better known Stuart Gordon Charles Band collaborations of the time. If you couldn't sleep as a child without covering up grandma's porcelain figurines, this is one for you. So after the trio of director Stuart Gordon, producer Brian Usner and writer Ed Naha had blazed a trail of gory horror classic throughout the 80s, how did they finish up the decade? Surely a superlative shocker. An all-time genre classic. Something really weird. You'd be right. They wrote Honey I Shrunk the Kids for Disney. 